Hey y'all, thank you for joining me for another episode of Undeniably Nikki. I am so excited to talk to you guys today. I have something great planned for you a little bit later in the show. Um, I actually am talking to a couple of my friends and we're gonna be talking about dating during COVID. Um, I did the interview with them over Zoom a little bit earlier today um, and it actually went from dating during COVID to just talking about a couple of other different dating things, including some dating horror stories. So I'm excited for you guys to see that. That is going to be later in the show. Um, in the meantime, I would love for you guys to just show me some love and make sure that you subscribe by hitting that bell. Ding! And also make sure that you are liking and commenting as you're watching this episode of Undeniably Nikki. Now, on to uh, what's been going on with me. Nothing much, really. You know, my last three weekends have been pretty busy and crazy. And this weekend was a little busy, too, but not necessarily as busy as the last three weekends. However, I still did not get a chance to just kind of relax and rest as much as I wanted to. Um, because, you know, I did end up doing some things and... Um, had to do some things around the house and things like that. But you know what? That's just life. And, you know, as at least I'm alive, you know. And we all know if you're an adult, um, which I'm pretty sure there's only adults watching this. Um, it's crazy how quickly your free time goes, you know. You know, you work all week and then you wait for that weekend. You're excited about the weekend starting on Monday as soon as it hits Monday. You're like, I can't wait for the weekend. And then the weekend comes, and then the weekend goes so fast. So anyway, I just can't believe that it is already Sunday. I always record on either Saturday or Sunday for you guys. And then I try to release it um, on either Wednesday or Thursday. Um, but yeah, it is, gosh, it is Sunday already. And my day is literally almost over. But... We need to do something y'all like if I was president which I would never want to be president I never want that job it's the most stressful job ever but if I was president I would try to make it where we all like it three-day weekends like mandatory no matter what job you're working no matter what days you're off whether you're off during the week or that you're off on the weekends I would definitely like make that one of my things of like signing into law that we get a three-day weekend because two days is just not enough it is not enough. Oh, anyway, but I digress. So anyway, like I said, I got some great stuff planned for you guys. Um, I'm excited for you to just kind of hear some things that my friends were saying about dating because they've been dating uh, during COVID and just to see, you know, if there's anything you guys can take from it. And, uh, you know, one of them has actually had some great success. So I'm excited for you guys to see that interview later. In the meantime, I want to talk to you guys, of course, about some hot topics because this wouldn't be undeniably Nikki if I'm not talking about hot topics, duh. So first I want to start off with congratulating Tiana Taylor and Iman Shumpert. They welcomed their second baby, which is another baby girl, and her name is Rue Rose. Rue Rose was born on, I think she was born on September the 6th, but let me just look it up just to make sure she was born on yeah September the 6th and she is super cute I'm looking at the picture now if you guys go on like the shade room or the jasmine brand on Instagram you can see a picture of the baby or even just go on Tiana Taylor's um or Iman Shumpert's uh, Instagram. They have a picture of the baby. But she's super cute. She came into the world around 3.28 a.m. And as you guys know, they already have a little girl who is adorable and a little Miss Thang, honey. Uh, her name is Junie. So Junie is a big sister now. So I want to definitely congratulate Iman and Tiana on their second baby. Babies are just always so beautiful and they just bring so much joy into the world so congratulations you all on your new baby girl rue rose um and also um just a little fun tip little tidbit on this apparently erica badu our goddess our goddess of 
amazing music. She actually brought helped bring Baby Rue into the world. A lot of people don't know, but Erica Badu is actually a doula. And uh, Tiana had Rue at her house um, like she did with Junie. And Erica Badu was there to assist. So she did this little post saying that she brought this baby in the world. So y'all know that baby gonna be extra blessed. Have some Tiana Taylor singing voice, some Erica Badu, Lil Grace on her. She gonna be extra special. So that's one of my good little announcements to give you guys. Another quick announcement that I just want to tell you about really quickly is that Blackish, which I don't know if y'all love Blackish, but I love Blackish. It's on ABC and it is produced by Kenya Barris and it stars um, Anthony Anderson, Tracy Ellis Ross, Shara Shahidi, um, um, all of the other kids. And it is so amazing. It's such a funny show. It's like, it's like a to me it's like a modern day Cosby show but quirkier and 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 kind of like it's quirkier and like a little funnier because it like makes you think a little bit more it's not just like um even though the Cosby show is one of my favorite sitcoms ever but anyway so Blackish is doing a spinoff um Kenya Burris is gonna have a spin spinoff of Blackish and it's gonna be starring our amazing wonderful Everybody's auntie, Jennifer Lewis. It's going to star Jennifer Lewis and everybody's favorite dad from the hood classic, Boys, Boys in the Hood. It's going to star Lawrence Fishburne. And Lawrence Fishburne and Jennifer Lewis, they play um, Anthony Anderson's character, Dre. They play his parents on the show Blackish. So the spinoff, Oldish, is going to also be on ABC. It's going to star both of them. And... It is, um, the show will focus on Ruby and Earl's relationship. So, on um, Blackish, Ruby and Earl are divorced and they like can't stand each other. They're always fighting. It's really funny. But on the new show, they are basically going to give their love a try again. So, because even though Ruby and Earl on Blackish always fight, you know, there's still a love there, which is why they fight so hard. So anyway, so I'm excited about this, y'all. So on the new show, like I said, they're gonna be it's gonna be focused on Ruby and Earl, played by Jennifer Lewis and Lawrence Fishburne, and um, it's about them moving to back to their neighborhood, which is rapidly becoming gentrified in LA. So you know that's just gonna be even funnier because Jennifer Lewis, of course, on Black is just as black as they come. Her and Lawrence Fishburne, they actually think that Dre and his family too bougie and have become a little bit too uh, whitewashed in some of the things that they do. So they always make fun of them about that. So the fact that they're moving back to their old LA neighborhood, which is now being gentrified, which is an issue in its own that we all have to deal with and hate to deal with. Um, it's just going to be make for some comedy slash thought provoking moments and that's what I love about Blackish because even though it's a comedy you know they tackle real issues and they do it in a way that will make you think but they also make you laugh and enjoy and have that family quality time so I'm excited about this I think it's gonna be funny um they there's already another there's a couple other spinoffs uh spinoffs from Blackish there is Grownish with Yara Shahidi and then there is um mixed mixed oh it's hard to say this one mixed ish with which is loosely based off of it's supposed to be like loosely based off of uh tracy ellis ross's life but not her not her life her character Bo's life that's what mixed ish is supposed to be based off of so um those two shows are hits too and they do very well so i'm pretty sure odish with these two powerhouses are gonna like kill it and do so well uh, let's see what else do I have for you guys for my announcement and it, it seems like I'm going a little fast talking a little fast it's because I have like a few things to get through and tell you guys but we had our um, like I said I had my zoom with my girls today talking about virtual dating and it kind of went long so I am just trying to get through some things really quickly so you guys can kind of still know what's going on with hot topics and then I'm going to get you guys to that interview with the girls about virtual dating and just dating in general oh this is a great one you guys Charlemagne the God he is launching his new podcast network 
which is so amazing. This is so amazing. He, I think he's like the first, I'm trying to think if, if he's the first to have, like the first black person to have a podcast network. That, I don't know. I don't want to say that because I really don't know for sure, but I'm going to tell you about it. So um, he is launching his first uh, podcast network. It's with iHeartMedia and it's called the Black Effect Podcast. And um, you guys know Charlemagne. He's from The Breakfast Club, which is um, in New York City. It's a radio show, but it's a syndicated radio show. We all know Charlemagne. We love Charlemagne. Well, anyway, he's, op he's going to have this network. It's called the Black Effect Podcast Network. And um, it's going to debut on September 18th on iHeartRadio. So it'll be on, basic. it's a podcast on iHeartRadio. Like, I think it was a total of 18 podcasts, and they're all black. So that is like black excellence at, at its finest. You know, um, the fact that he thought to even come up with this network, and he partnered with iHeartRadio, which is who he is already a part of. Um, he obviously trusts them, so he partnered with them, and he created this network, and it is going to be showcasing content from 18 different podcasts. 18 different podcasts that are, I think they're all black. I'm trying to rethink. I'm like going through, trying to go through the list in my head, but I think they're all black. So um, this is going to be so dope. It's going to be so good. Also, can we just discuss, I love that he called it the black effect. I love that. Um, okay, so let's see if I have a list. Okay, so the lineup will include Drink Champs with Nori and DJ Effin. I think I'm saying this right, y'all. If I'm not, just correct me in the comments. I, I won't be upset. All the Smoke with Matt Barnes. The 85 South Show with Carlos Miller, DC Young Fly, and Clayton English. Horrible Decisions with Mandy B and Wheezy. Dropping Gems with De Debbie Brown. Holding Court with Ebony K. Williams. Love Ebony K. Williams. Carefully Reckless with Jess Hilarious. By the way, the 85 South Show, I've never seen it, but I love these guys because they're on um, Nick Cannon's Wild and Out. So I'm pretty sure I would like this show. So I think I'm going to start listening to it. I love podcasts. Love podcasts. As you guys know, I used to have my own podcast. Um, I used to do it with a friend, and it was called Red Cups and Wine Glasses, and I loved it. I loved doing it so much. I loved having that camaraderie with someone else, and we had so much fun. And that was kind of like the launching off that got me to want to actually do my own YouTube channel. So, anyway, I'm excited about this. I love podcasts. Um, let's see. Where did I leave off? Horrible Decisions with Mandy B. and Wheezy. Dropping Gems with Debbie Brown. Holding Court with Ebony K. Williams. Carefully Reckless with Jess Hilarious. Street Politicians with Tamika Mallory and my son. Hot Happy Mess with Zuri Hall. I love Zuri Hall. Untitled with, I think the name is Bonang Matheba. Untitled with Bonang Atheba. Matheba. Hello Somebody with Senator Nina Turner. P.O.D. with Ashley and Tammy. Straight Shot No Chaser with Teslin Figaro. Laugh and Learn with Flame Monroe. Um, and Laugh and Learn, by the way, is produced by Tiffany Haddish. And Checking In with Michelle Williams and Cut to It with Stephen Smith Sr. So as y'all can see, that is just a list of what to me sounds like would be will be amazing content just to uh, appeal to the masses appeal to everyone and it has he's got some heavy hitters on this list too so i'm excited about this i think this is great i think charlemagne is one of our voices of pop culture our voices of the of the culture like meaning the black culture uh our voices just in one of our popular voices in radio in general. And people are always checking for Charlemagne and trying to see what he's talking about and how he feels on different decisions and different things that's going on in the world. So um, the fact that he is now using his platform to make create an even bigger platform for creatives, I just think it's dope. I think it's amazing. I think it's going to be good. And I'm excited about this. So Charlemagne, I definitely salute you, my brother. You are black excellence. And I salute you for putting together the Black Effect Podcast Network. 
I'm gonna sloop with my big water jug because I don't have any wine today. So <laughs> right on Charlemagne. Okay, let's see what else I got for you guys. Let's see. Um, oh, okay, so you guys, um, the Ellen DeGeneres show, Ellen, is supposed to be coming back to TV with all new episodes on September 21st. And, you know, we all know that every show, they go on a little hiatus for the summer and they come back for the fall with all new shows and everything like that. So, you know, you're probably thinking, okay, what's the big deal? Why are you telling me that? We all know this. I know, but here's the deal. So Ellen has been dealing with some scandal in the past, I want to say month or so, a couple of months, um, because there is all this stuff that has come out about how her show creates a very hostile work environment for uh, different employees. And um, a lot of them have sued. Um, so ever since all this stuff has been coming out, um, there has been stuff coming out about Ellen too, about her not maybe being as nice, which is so crazy to me. And it actually like upsets me because I'm such, you guys, I'm such an Ellen fan. I love Ellen. I literally, like every time I watch her show, I probably cry at the end of it every single time because she does so much good. She gives back to so many people and is always like blessing someone's life with a car with some money and she tells these amazing stories of these these stories of triumph of different people and then she gives to them and as a person who has such a giving I have a giving heart that is like a spirit of mine um I just love seeing that you know that's one of the reasons I loved Oprah so much I love that she was a person who was so kind hearted and gave back you know because you know to whom much is given much is expected and i'm a true believer in that so when it came out all this stuff came out that ellen maybe is not the nicest person i was just like what like please there's got to be some explanation please tell me this is not true because i love ellen um I think what has turned out is that a lot of the complaints and issues um, have been too with the producers, her producing staff. Um, there have been, I think, a total of two producers who have been fired uh, for creating a hostile work environment for, the, for her workers. Um, but still, I, I also kind of believe too where there's smoke, there's fire. I can't bury my head in the sand about this and be naive and think that, you know, people are just trying to be out to get Ellen... Um, it makes me wonder, you know, is this all a front? Is, is she really not this amazingly nice person um, and caring person that we all have grown to love and know? Um, and that's so disheartening, y'all. That is so disheartening to me because I would like to think that people can just be genuinely good and do good things and do nice things for people and not do it because they think it's going to get them ratings or they think it's going to make them popular or they trying to keep a, a facade or something like that. I would really hate to think that, but oh, man, I really hate to think that, but you know, you just never know. And like I said, obviously where there's smoke, there's fire. But anyway, I've digressed. I went on my Ellen tangent because like I said, I really love the show. And I love Ellen, um, but now I'm like nervous that I'm gonna have to like, you know, give her a side eye. Um, but basically, her show is coming back on the 21st. It's gonna be the 18th season, and um, Ellen actually made a little. St she made a statement um, in regards to her show, and she said that I can't wait to get back to work and back to our studio. And yes, we're gonna talk about it. So. To me, that just definitely says that when they do come back, she's not going to sweep it under the rug and that they're going to definitely talk about everything that we all have been seeing and hearing for the last month and a half um, in regards to these allegations against her and against her um, company, studio, and different people who work for her. So it'll be interesting to see what she says. Um... I'm not going to lie though, the naive part of me is still like really hoping that this stuff is not true and there's some type of explanation because I just can't see someone being so good and like wanting to help people and doing so much. She didn't even have to take on that platform and that mantle of doing that. She 
had a platform and mantle of just being um, funny, you know, and interviewing celebrities. So I can't see someone doing that and not really meaning it, you know, and not really mean being a good person. I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to be looking. I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be trying to see if I'm getting genuineness from what um, Ellen is saying. And if I'm not, I'm going to be giving side eye. Um, but I really hope, you know, like I said, I know it's naive of me. Because, like, where there's smoke, there's fire. But I'm just like, oh, I love Ellen. I had one more thing to tell you guys about. Oh, y'all. Okay. So did y'all hear about um, Keely Williams? Now y'all may not remember who she is, so I'm a, uh, I'm gonna tell you who she is. So Keely Williams is one of the singers of 3LW. Remember 3LW? It was Adrian Bailon, it was Keely Williams, and it was Natori Nalton. Now we all know Natori Nalton from Power, right? Um, she played Ghost's wife, uh, Tasha, and she has become this you know, great actress. She also was in, oh, I can't think of the movie. The movie about Biggie Smile, she played Little Kim, but I can't think of the name of the movie. What was the name of it? Oh, I can't think of it. But anyway, we all know Natari Nelton for her, her acting skills and stuff like that. But before we knew her for that, we all knew her from 3LW. We all knew the drama that went down with that. We all knew that, you know, there was a whole issue of colorism that was happening, you know, because the one chocolate beautiful mocha skin sister that they had in the group she was kicked out and then when she was kicked out there was all the stuff that came out that said you know that she was pretty much discriminated against because she was um the darker skin sister and then um she also had a lot of beef she got into her and keely had a lot of beef with each other and that keely and her mother maybe weren't the nicest people and used to make her life a living hell so we all know like all those stories allegedly you know um we know all those stories in regards to that so the latest thing that came out is that natasha not natasha natari nalton is um going to be putting out an album and in her album she's going to be touching on her some of the songs not all of them like a little of the music will touch on her time in 3lw um now, when I first read this, I was kind of like thinking to myself, like, but she's come so far beyond 3LW. I don't know why she would go back and focus on that. And the thing is, but then after I thought about it a little bit, it could honestly end up being just like one song that she does. And it has some connotations about in regards to what she went through being in that group. So, you know, I pull that thought process back a little bit of like, why would she even focus on this? She's come so far. She's won, you know. I pull that thought process back a little bit and was like, you know what? Everyone, like I said, it could only be, it may only be like one or two songs. I'm pretty sure that won't be the focus of the entire album. Because um, like, she's moved on. She has um, a husband. She has a child. She has this hit show that she's a part of she was a part of now she's a part of the sp uh, spinoff so i'm like you know i'm pretty sure she's not trying to go backwards so let me you know not judge and be like okay why are we still talking about this um because i wasn't trying to judge her it was just like girl you you're winning like you don't need to talk about this craziness that happened in the past you know i don't even know keely williams name the only time i know her name is when she come up in the news you know what i'm saying um but, you know, now that I think about it, too, I'm like, this may be part of her process, too, of just completely being done with it and not mentioning it ever again. You know, because every single time she does an interview, now that I think about it, people always bring it up. She's done so much to move beyond that. You know, she's this solidified actress, you know, and but people always bring up 3LW, you know? And she's a grown woman now. She's a grown woman in her 30s now. She was in 3LW when she was like 15 years old, 14, 15, 16 years old, you know? So um, with that said, you know, it also doesn't help too that people always gotta put your name in their mouth. So when I say that, I'm talking about Kaylee Williams. So after Natari kind of announced that she was going to make this new album um, and touch on a little bit of her past in 3LW. 
Keely Williams decided to shade her a little bit on social media, which y'all, I don't even know why we following her. Like, I don't follow her, but I'm just saying, like, why are people even following her? Like, what was the last thing she done? Like, the last thing she did was 3LW. Like, she's not doing anything productive that we should be interested in or anything. All she does, I feel like every time I see her in the news, it's never about her doing anything to improve her life or improve her craft as an artist or anything like that it's always some negativity and it's always some drama and some shade the last time she was in the news which was a little bit earlier this summer she was beefing with raven simone a little bit and then her and raven had to do this raven and because raven simone you know she's not playing that so raven did this like uh, instagram live and was like okay let's just squash this and then it was another thing where she was beefing with adrian bylon this is keely keely williams so the latest thing is that um, she put on Instagram and she said, where was, oh, it started with, so after it came out that Natalia was going to say this, Keely responded with um, a picture that says, I can't believe you're still bitter. And it looks like the I can't believe it's not butter sign. And then she wrote a post and she said, where was Team Tasha when this gem was dropped? And the gym she's talking about is a video of Natari Nalton um, singing one of her songs. And she says, see, she already addressed her pain years ago. You weren't paying attention because she didn't have a hit show. But see how nice I am? I showed you something new. So go support your girl's music. It's a bop. Am I right? Now, y'all, y'all know she was being messy. She wasn't trying to... <laughs> She wasn't trying to show support or anything like that. She was trying to shade on the low. Um, and I don't know why she's saying people weren't supporting Natari Nalton. Like, like to me, she's trying to say people are only supporting Natari Nalton because she has a hit show. But I remember when everything went down with 3LW, Natari Nalton got a lot of support then, which is why 3LW did not last once she got out the roof. She got a lot of support. People were supporting her because people thought it was shady the way she was being treated. And people thought it was jacked up. So, um, I guess my whole thing is, I feel like both of these ladies are grown now. They're grown. That was childhood stuff. I don't understand why this is still such a topic of discussion. I don't understand. Says me, who's actually talking about it right now, so do what you want with that but anyway but my point is like i just don't understand why they are still going back and forth well not even natari natari never goes back and forth she never really addresses anything that keely says keely gets on um instagram live and stuff she pop offs all the time she posts little videos and says little things you know about it i feel like she's doing it because she i don't want to say irrelevant because i feel like everyone is relevant as a person but in this business, she's irrelevant right now. You know what I'm saying? In the entertainment industry, she's irrelevant. So I feel like that's why she says a lot of things that she says and does a lot of things that she does. Um, I personally don't think Natari needs to address it again. But like I said, I think her mind frame too could be like, you know what? I'm going to put it in a song. It's going to be done with and that's it. Because every single time this woman is on an interview, someone asks her about 3LW. Even though she has accomplished so much more since 3LW people always go back to that so I don't know what do y'all think about this do you think that Natari should even bring it up in her music that she's gonna release again especially because she has so much going on like so much amazingness that's happening right now in her career and her life and um do you think Keely should get a life and stop always starting stuff. I feel like she always starting stuff. Like, girl, you the one person in the group that's beef with everybody. Like, why? You know? So, huh. I don't know. I just think it's weird that it's still being brought up and both of them are grown women. That's like me bringing up a beef I may have had with someone when I was like a kid. I don't know. I think it's weird. But anyway. So, that's what I had on that. Okay, y'all, but I have digressed way too much. Um, I am so ready for you guys to get into this interview with two of my girls. 
Bree from LA and Karen from Chicago. I have known Karen for about 20 years and I've known Bree through our mutual, one of our mutual best friends, Shakayla. I have known Bree for two years. Um, yeah, so we met through a mutual friend, but um, yeah, maybe two years or one year, like one year. But anyway, it doesn't matter. She's a gem and I just adore her too. I adore her and I adore Karen. And they both have actually been very brave and taking part in this virtual dating and taking part in dating during COVID, which you don't have to be brave for virtual dating. But what I wanted to say was they've both been very brave and dating during COVID. Um, so I wanted to just talk to them, you know, just talk to them as friends and just kind of be like, how has that been, you know? Because I think it could help some people who are maybe thinking about doing this themselves. So, without further ado, here is the interview slash chit chat that I did with Bree and Karen today. Okay, so I we're already recording and I just want to welcome you guys to Undeniably Nikki. I wanted to do this episode um, because I have just been seeing that a lot of people are dating um, during COVID. And I know like in the beginning, many people weren't doing it because, you know, everything was kind of scary and we don't really know what was going on. And we're all afraid of getting the coronavirus, you know, like in our Cardi B voice, you know, we're all afraid of that, right? So, but I know Brie dated virtually for like three months. I know that was kind of like your situation. And I know Care Bear, she has been, I always see like little pictures on Instagram where I feel like she going on a date or something. So I sent her a message and was like, girl, are you, are you dating during COVID? Like what's going on? She's like, I'm trying. So from that moment, I was like, okay, I want to have a discussion. I want to talk about dating during COVID. And I want to know, just, I want to talk to two people who have two totally different experiences. Care Bears and Karen, I'll call her Karen. Karen's in Chicago and Bree's in LA. And I just want to know like what it's like, because as a single person myself, I want to date right now, but I'm like afraid to date because you guys both know I have a coronavirus and it knocked me on my butt for like four, four weeks. I was knocked on my butt and I still don't completely feel a hundred percent myself. Um, so I know it's no joke. And so I'm a little bit nervous about like going out to meet new people who I don't know. And I don't know if they're doing their due diligence. It's different like than hanging out with friends where you know that they're doing what they should be doing to make sure they stay safe, where you hope they are. And you know that they're not gonna come around you if they're sick, but like a stranger, you don't know what they're gonna do and if they're gonna take that type of uh, appreciation for your health, you know, that your friends and your loved ones will. So I wanted to talk to you guys and I just kind of wanted to know like, what has it been like um, dating in COVID? I just, just kind of start from the beginning. I'll start with you, uh, Karen, you want to kind of tell me, like, what made you even want to decide to continue dating with everything that's going on with COVID? So it was interesting because um, we were just talking a few minutes ago that, you know, I had unconfirmed COVID. Mm -hmm. And so I was in a house a lot because I had to quarantine for 14 days. And then I ended up being sick longer than the, the, the 14 days, like about a good three, four months. I was like on my butt. Yeah. Um, and yeah. One day I was talking to my friend and she's like, Ooh, you know what you need to do? You need to get on Tinder. And I was like, why? <laughs> I, wasn't, like, I don't do Tinder when I'm not sick, you know? So, yeah. and she kind of was like, just get on Tinder because um, there's nothing else to do. Everybody's at home and just do it for fun. And so I joined and then she immediately like left. Like she stopped using it the next day. <laughs> um, so I was like, well, you know, I can meet some new people. So I put in like, oddly enough, I went to meet guys in Las Vegas, um, in California. In Las Vegas, really? On the West yeah, Coast? <laughs> yeah, but I was just like, oh, I would love to meet like, to the West. You would, oh, you mean you would match with people who are like not in your state? Yeah, but I'm I matched with a couple people here too. It's some new thing I now. You can put in different uh, zip codes. I was like, oh, sure. I yeah, I want to live in Santa Monica when I make tons of money one day. <laughs> um, so I met a couple of guys. And uh, one of the guys I talked to a lot actually was in Vegas. Um, and, you know, it was, it was challenging because, I mean, it's long distance. And also, even the one here in Chicago, um, 
you know, it's just like, hey, do you want to go out? And I was literally in the thicket of COVID. You know, like I couldn't walk to the bathroom without being exhausted. Exhausted. Go, yeah. Like, completely out of breath. And, you know, they were just like, the guy in Vegas was like, you should come out here and visit me. And I was like, on a plane? Excuse me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting on a plane. It's not it's not happening. Right. <laughs> like, um, so you know, it it was definitely a challenge. But um, so I didn't really match with anybody on Tinder. Uh, but I started spending a lot more time on Facebook and in Facebook groups. Mm. So, um, I'm all the Facebook groups. The all Facebook the groups. groups are exciting, <laughs> and then I know we're in one together, and yeah. it's a little more tame. But some of the Facebook groups that I'm in. Oh, so. I believe it. My sister's in two Facebook groups out here in Vegas that she's like, sister, you can't handle it. Like, you, you're you not ready. You're, you're just not ready. So she's like, you are not wonky. ready. You'll be <laughs> okay, what are these Facebook groups? I want to be in one. So there's like all these different groups. Um, so like out here in Vegas, there's a Black Las Vegas group. And mm. so it's just kind of like a bunch of different Black people from, who are from different cities and then people who are from uh, Vegas. And we're all just like, well, they're all in a group together. And that's one of the ones that my sister's uh, in. Because I'm in it's, one it's called like Girls Night Out. It's like one of those ones that's like all over the country, but it's just for women. Yeah. I feel like they post like horror story. I, I posted like a horror story on there once. And then like just showing the screenshots of this person that was harassing me on from like a dating website, like three girls commented and were like, wait, we've been harassed by this person. Are you and serious? Like, yeah. So it's like a cool Facebook group. So I was like, oh, is it one of those? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it's like it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, like you learn about like different things that's going on around town, and then everybody yeah. kind of goes to them. It's like it's it's just like a social group type of thing where yeah. everyone's just kind of talking. And you're meeting new people. There's some people in there you know, and then you're also meeting new people. So you got on one, Karen, that was like um, for dating in Las Vegas. You said. Well, this was just for basically a lot of people are in Chicago that are in this particular group. Um, and so you just kind of get, because everyone's online, you know, we were at home working, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I got to like meet a couple of guys. And so I've gone out on a few dates um, and it took them a while to convince me to come outside. Right. For, again, it's still, it's that I don't, I know you're dating other people because we're all in the same group. So right. I know you're out there and you're dating and, you know, you claim that you're, you're being careful, but it's like, people are still catching COVID even with masks, you know? So it's, <laughs> it's, it's still a little daunting. Um, but yeah, I mean, so there's a couple of guys that I, that I, I'm still kind of dating. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just been really weird. It's yeah. been weird. Um, but what I do like, I feel like um, because we've been stuck in the house that I know these people a little bit better than I typically would um, pre COVID. So you, you felt know? like you got to know them better. Yeah, it was kind of, yeah, you're forced to like actually have conversations. Yeah, that's what I, I see a lot of people have been saying that. Bree, what was your experience? Like, like start from the beginning, because I think your story is so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like, I was like sweating before this, because I like don't He's even. so <laughs> nervous about I'm this. like so uncomfy talking about um, <laughs> my relationship with like even like, I, if Shakayla called me right now and asked me to like divulge a lot of information, I'd be like itching. Um, so my boyfriend was like, you're going to, like, our friend. <laughs> you're going to talk on YouTube about it. I was like, yes, I, will. Um, <laughs> I love Nikki. So, uh, yeah, so I, you. I too didn't have dating apps, um, going into COVID and I don't really like, even like prior, I had like gone on some dates from dating apps before, like intermittently when I've been single in Los Angeles, but LA is just its own type of like just horrifying like the, the the landscape is just not good and that's um, how Vegas is Vegas is like that too yeah so I always just feel like if I'm gonna meet somebody it's just gonna have to be like the perfect storm of just like having chemistry and just like you know like I'm all about like just like pheromones and like we just hit it off and yes know in person so I am yep. so against dating apps like I am literally like the I was like the most like they're dumb and one of my best <laughs> friends been in like a very successful relationship from a dating app yeah and like I know a lot of people who are actually I mean Shakela, like we, yeah. we have 
friends who are. So I know that I'm wrong, but even so I was like very convicted. I was like dating apps are stupid, but we're going to like fuck around on run one because we're in quarantine and we have nothing to do. Yeah. So I just like got on, um, uh, hinge and, um, oh. I literally just like started swiping right on like, you know, guys I thought were hot basically because <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. And I had like three guys I was talking to at once. My boyfriend knows the story, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> did you hear that? Wait, did you hear that, Karen? Her boyfriend. Her boyfriend. Yeah, I heard uh, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's my boyfriend. <laughs> um, so I group texted Shakela, one of our mutual friends, and then our, she and I's um, best friend from college. We're in a group text together. And I'm like, choose your fighter or something like that. And I send them these three guys I'm talking to. And um, for the first two guys, I send like one photo each of them. And then for my boyfriend now, I sent like seven photos of him. <laughs> and they were like, okay, like. <laughs> Clearly you like this guy. <laughs> yeah, so he was yeah. like, you're leaning um, one way. And then um, we basically chatted on the app and then moved to texting and we, and we just texted for like two weeks and it was like really early, like March, mid-March. And I just was like, I'm not gonna even go on like a walk with someone. Like I'm literally not leaving my house. And I just remember one day we were having like, we had just been having like bullshit conversations. And then one day I kind of like said something like, oh, that sounds like a childhood wound. I don't know. I said something jokingly, but he answered for real and actually told me like a real piece of information about himself. Aww. And I just realized like, oh, wow, I like am invested in this person. And he had this like, and like this story from his childhood that was very parallel to something that happened to me in my childhood. And it just like, I just was like, huh, I should like maybe actually get to know this person. So we just honestly started like, z like doing zoom dates. We would like make pizza on zoom and like get drunk and like, <laughs> and it was basically once parks open back up in California, we went to a park every single Saturday and we would sit on our own blankets and we would bring wine and we would just talk for like six hours in a park. And is that, that not was, a romantic that was comedy? This is like a romantic six weeks. comedy. <laughs> it's a romantic comedy. Is it not? Yeah, we did not see each other. <laughs> you know what's funny though is wait, that wait, I went on wait. a park date and it was like it's like this is so simple, but it is super romantic and really yeah. nice. So wait, what did you say, Bree? You guys would after you said um you guys would sit on the blanket. I'm so sorry I interrupted, but I was just like I couldn't believe it because no. it just sounded like such a romantic comedy, like a romantic movie to me, you know, a rom com. So you said you would sit on your own separate blankets when you went on your park date? Yeah, yeah. So I'd be on my blanket. He'd be on his. We'd both bring, like, cups and then oh. pour wine and just hang out and, like, day drink. And, like, you were social distancing. That's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> but we had to, like, strategically, like, find, like, parks that had bathrooms. So, like, you could pee. And then, like, all these COVID things would happen. Like, at one point, like, one of the bathrooms closed at, like, 6. And it was, like, 6.15 and I had to pee. And we were still on our date. And I was like locked out of the bathrooms and then I had to like find somewhere to hide and pee. It was like, <laughs> I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Right now? <laughs> like, wow, it's hard out here. It's really hard out here. So uh, when did you guys like um, decide that you can actually have more of a contact with each other? Like, you know, actually like Netflix and chill type stuff. Yeah, we basically decided after like a month and a half, it was like six weeks. It was like six weeks of like park dates texting to park dates to us being like all right like we basically are dating without ever having been within six feet of each other and now we need to know if we like have any other chemistry and like yeah. want to actually date date because yeah. you can only do this for so long before it's like not really like we can't move forward we can't progress in our relationship and so I basically like talked to my roommate and like let her know and like we just were like yeah okay we're gonna start like hanging out in person and that's what we did and then from there so it was just like oh yeah so like we did the whole like courting thing like very old school like no yeah. kissing no touching 
that yeah. thing. And then we're like so excited to be able to like hang out because we were like, it, it literally was just like, I, I felt like a middle schooler. Like I was like. Uh, that's like the best so feeling. Cute. When you feel yeah, like that about like, someone. Yeah. I'm definitely not like that normally in relationships. <laughs> like I just like never take it slow. I'm never like I'm innocent. <laughs> like I'm not like <laughs> waiting forever to like make out with someone, you know? So. Yeah. Oh, but I wonder cute. if that like is what makes it so much more meaningful right now because yeah. typically we do rush into things and now mm-hmm. it's like I'm forced to really get to know you um, or like I'm forced to notice those red flags early now you know what I mean yeah so like so when you're able to have that like chemistry it's just like this is so awesome you know you feel all giddy inside you do and that's like the best feeling when you feel that way about someone I tried to do the whole like okay so I have a I was gonna say a love hate relationship with dating apps, but it's not even a love. I have an okay like hate relationship with uh, relationship with dating apps. So I was on uh, three different apps before COVID, but I had kind of like made up in my mind like last year that I was just like over dating apps because I just wasn't having like the best success from them. Like people lie a lot yeah. on these apps, and I know like. You can meet someone out and then not really know them and they can lie too. But it was just like, it's a lot of misleading, I should say. Um, I actually got catfished on Hinge, Brie. I I got catfished. And I was like, as soon, once I got catfished, I was done with that app. So I, it was a I guy. It like wasn't the person. Huh? Just wasn't the person. It wasn't the person. He wasn't. And they stole person. somebody's pictures? He stole someone's picture, someone's complete like lifestyle. So he um, he told me that he was um, stationed at I can't remember what do you call it uh, where the the military people stay at, at a base. No, um, a base. Yes, he was stationed at a base in San Diego, which I don't typically go towards like military people. In general, I don't usually date military men because it's like, I just know me, I'm a worrier. And so if they were to ever, if I was to ever marry one and they were to get deployed, I just know I would never have any type of peace of mind. So I usually kind of don't lean towards that way. I respect our service members. I, I appreciate them, but I don't lean that way dating wise just because I know how I am. Um, but this person, like, I just, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I thought he was cute. So I was like, okay, why not? And we talked and everything. And this wasn't during COVID. I was catfished a while ago. Um, and so anyway, this dude ended up lying. He completely wasn't in San Diego at all because I kept trying to FaceTime with him and he would never want to FaceTime. And I thought that was weird. And then when he finally, I told him, I was like, you never want to FaceTime. So I, I think you're catfishing me. At this point, we had only been talking like maybe two weeks, talking, you know, through um, Messenger and then on the phone. And, and then he was like, no, that's not it. That's not it. So then he was like, okay, get this app and I'll FaceTime you on this app. So I get the app. I think it was like Kick or something. Is that Kick? I think that's what it was called. I call him. He doesn't answer. Then he calls me. I pick up. I can't see him at all. It's like completely dark. Okay. As a person who loves Catfish, I love watching the show Catfish. Cause I'm just so like intrigued by it. And I just can't believe people are actually still doing this to people or get fooled. I knew right away, red flags. This is shady. Something's not right. So I was like, you are a catfish. You are not real. <laughs> he was like, no, I'm not. I promise I am. And I was like, I was like, no, you're not. I was like, you just tried to FaceTime me and I can't even see you. And then, so I was like, I'm done. I'm blocking you. And then the person FaceTimed me where I could see him. And he's like, Okay, he's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not from San Diego. He was from, like, Nigeria. He lived in, like, Nigeria. He didn't look oh any like his picture. Didn't have the same name. He, totally different person. I was like, oh, my God. So I totally got catfish. It only, honestly, it only took, like, like I said, two weeks of my time. But still, that was really annoying. So after that happened with Hinge, I completely deleted Hinge. I was like, I'm done. This one is not secure enough. There's catfish people on it. So I deleted Hinge, but I kept Bumble and I kept OkCupid and I kept um, Black. 
It's one that's called Black. Or do you know about that one, Karen? I have never heard of that one. Do you know about that one, Bree? Black? Shakes mm-hmm. was on that one for a little bit too. So anyway, I just have not really had a good success story. I did meet a guy last year that I ended up talking to for like a few months through it, but it didn't turn into a relationship or anything. I just have not had like the best luck with dating apps at all. So I was completely done with them. I was over them. But like you guys said, we were home. It was COVID. There was nothing to do. So I just kind of started swiping a little bit. But then I was just like, I couldn't even do it. Like, I honestly didn't even have the will to want to because of just past experience with dating apps and stuff like that. Um, and plus, I was like, it's COVID. Like, I'm not going to go out and meet a stranger. I don't trust them. I don't know if they're taking themselves serious and protecting themselves. So anyway, that was just kind of my experience with it. So I did just, like I said, I want to talk to you guys because I know that you guys have been out there being a little bit more brave than me um, and being a little bit bolder just to let people know your experience in case there's some other people out there right now who are thinking about doing the same thing. Yeah, you can't even like really go to a bar, go to a restaurant in the majority of the U.S. though. So I feel like even if you're like anti dating apps, like I was like, you can't have human connection unless you're in community with people online right now. Yeah. Breaking all the COVID rules, you know, like all of the social distancing kind of like guidelines that are in place. So I feel like it's like an abnormal time where even if you're not necessarily like interested in online dating, it's like, it's like, you don't really have a lot of other options. And so people like me were on it that wouldn't normally be on it. So I feel like the dating pool is actually even wider right now on the apps. Cause I think way more people are probably on them. Yeah. I would say the same thing too. The other day I was just like, wow, I'm talking to way more people like in the last six to nine months than I did any other year before. Um, and I, I was like, what happened to the, there are no guys out there. There clearly are a lot of guys out there. Um, I don't know where they've been hiding, but they're out there, but Look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if they're dateable. I don't know if they're dateable, but they're out there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm literally like you, Brie, like I am not a fan of dating apps. Um, I don't think I would go back on Tinder. Um, I don't know. That's the only one you were on. That, so I've done Hinge before. I did Hinge maybe last year, year before last. And I had this experience where I met this guy. So I'm, I'm really into like astrological matchups, right? And I met this guy. He's like, I'm a Sag. And I was like, oh, I am too. We're not going to work well together. And he's like, no, it's fine. <laughs> and so like I, have, I went down to Atlanta to visit my cousin. <clears throat> excuse me. And he, we probably had talked to maybe twice. And he, he FaceTimes me and he's just like, while you're down there, go to the uh, Harley Davidson store and buy me a shirt. And I was just like, oh, you're funny. He was like, no, I'm serious. I'm like, I'm not going to buy you a shirt. And then I found out he was like in prison. And I was like, you know, oh my God. this isn't my thing. This isn't my mission. That are so unreal. <laughs> I really have. Well, you know what? You know what? Like, it was just his whole approach. He didn't even ask, can you buy yeah. me a shirt? And then I'll reimburse you. No, he it was, was like, you no. buy me the shirt. And then I said, well, I don't know. And I told him, I said, I don't know you well enough to be buying you gifts. And he's like, well, we go on the date, then you can buy your own drinks. And I was like, I have a job. Oh, yes. I, I can buy my, I was like, don't even worry about it. There will be no date. <laughs> oh, my God. There will never be a date. Oh, my God. Speaking of. So multi. So ballsy. Oh, speaking of ballsy, I have to tell you one of my horror stories from the dating app. Um, I've had a lot of horror stories, you guys. So last summer, this guy I met on the app, I was talking to him and he was like, I'm a flight attendant, but I come to Vegas all the time because I'm, I'm on, um, I don't know how it's explained, but he's on the flights that come to Vegas a lot. And so he was like, you know, the next time I come, I would love to um, take you out. And I was like, of course, you know, we were talking and everything. So he comes here, y'all. He's like, okay, I'm here. He's like, let's, he's like, you want to meet up? And I'm like, yeah, sure. He's like, okay, um, let's meet up. At this point, he was like, we're going to meet up around maybe like nine. 
But then the flight guy, he had issues with like, you know, getting everyone off the plane. And by the time that was done, he didn't end up getting to his hotel room to about 1030. And I was like, okay, no worries. It's Vegas. Y'all know it stays open. Yeah. We're super late. So I wasn't even tripping. So then he calls me. He goes, you know what? Actually, um, I'm a little tired. And he's like, I kind of just want to stay in the room. Do you want to just come to my room and we'll order dinner? Excuse me, sir. I don't know you. So I was like, um, nah, I, I don't want to do that. I said, I don't really know you like that. And he was like, oh, he was like, okay. Um, he was like, well, he was like, man, I'm just really tired. I said, okay. I said, well, if you're tired, I'll catch you next time. Listen, bruh, I'm not desperate. I'm not going to be like, okay. Also, excuse no, okay. me, sir. Have you ever heard of like, that's how people get murdered? Exactly. 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 Where that happens. And I work in news, so I'm paranoid as it is. Oh, yeah. So I was like, okay, then I'll catch you next time. And he was like, um, he was like, well, wait, no, I really want to see you. He was like, well, um, we can just go, we can go somewhere. He was like, uh, we can go to like the restaurant in the lobby or something like that. And uh, I was like, okay, whatever. Restaurant in the lobby. It's not a big deal. It's Vegas. It's Vegas hotel. Right. You know. Nice, nice restaurants. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So as I'm on my way to meet him, he's like, actually, can you pick me up at the, the, the Mad Men dispensary? He's like, I'm here with my coworker and we wanted to get some, you know, edibles. Med Men. Med Men. Med Men. That's what it's yeah. called. Med Men. Sorry. Can you pick me <laughs> oh, up? Oh, okay. Me? I was thinking Mad Men. I was like, wow, yeah. that's a Mad Men dispensary. <laughs> so lit. Okay. He was getting something like <laughs> that. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Bree. Can you pick me up at the Med Men? I'm like, oh, what was he buying? A credenza? <laughs> <laughs> so i was like okay sh sure no big deal because i know he doesn't have a car he's a tourist right now so okay fine so i go pick him up at the medman and his co-worker is a woman right which is not a big deal to me it is not but here's the thing i don't know what your relationship is with her i don't know if she likes you you like her you fooling with her you know it it why would you put me in that situation, right? right? So they come out to the car and I'm just like, okay. So she gets in the car. She looking at me like, who is this? I'm looking at her like, oh, Lord. Like, girl, it ain't even, listen. I don't like that. It ain't even like that. <laughs> no. So she, Also, do not, she, like, pivot my date into me becoming your Uber driver. Like, okay. seriously. So he gets in the back and he's like, hey, beautiful. And he like reaches over and gives me a hug. First of all, he comes out to the car, y'all. He got on a wife beater and some basketball shorts. So I'm looking cute for a date. And you, you got on wife beater basketball Fair shorts. Enough. You come to the car with your coworker, who's a woman. And I'm just like, okay. So at this point, I'm like, I'm already kind of checked out the date. I'm just like, but I'm I'm too nice. I'm too nice, right? Because also, what what? Okay, now it's like, are you going to a lobby restaurant or are we I going, going to McDonald's? To, yeah, like, <laughs> what restaurant can you take him? In? Where, are we, where are we going? So he oh. gets in the car. She gets in the front seat, and so at this point, I started like talking and everything you know trying to keep it nice and cool and chill and I can kind of tell like she's trying to feel me out and make sure I'm not gonna act crazy I'm trying to feel her out and make sure she don't act crazy so at this point I'm like okay so where are all you guys from I know you're from the dude was from Baltimore I'm like oh I know you're from Baltimore and then I was like where are you from and she's like I'm from Chicago Karen as soon as she said I'm from Chicago, I say, oh, I know how she is. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. Because I already knew at that point, I was like, oh, she just trying to feel me out and make sure mm -hmm. I ain't on nothing stupid. And I'm trying to feel her out. So at that point, I immediately knew, okay, it's going to be okay. She, she's Midwestern? Kind of her, huh? Is Lovely? she Midwestern? Yeah, she's Midwestern. Is it because she's Midwestern? Because, yeah. she's, because she's from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Bree, what part of the Midwest are you from? Ohio. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. You know us Midwest girls. Here. You know us Midwest girls. We got we got sense. So I was like, okay. And then too, I just like thought about my old my homegirls. Thanks, Zoom. They just gave me some extra time. I just thought about my homegirls um too in Chicago. And I just kind of think about like how some of them have been. 
where they're like the biggest sweethearts, but they have a little bit of a tougher exterior. That's a tough exterior. They don't it's a tough fill you out. Yeah, because you just need to know. So I was like, okay. So he's like, okay, so where do you want to go? And I was like, well, um, let's just go to the planet, planet Hollywood. Let's go to, we can park at planet, uh, not planet Hollywood. Um, oh, the mall, the miracle mile, which is like the big mile that leads to planet Hollywood. I was like, we can go there. Cause at this point I'm kind of checked out. I'm like, we're far free. We're in the car. We're all talking. We're laughing. It's a good little time, you know, but I'm, tur- I'm kind of turned off, you know, by just the presentation of how he even presented himself on the date. And then also trying to like get into his hotel room, you know, just the, he came off a little, he's starting to look a little shady to me. So anyway, but I'm, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. So we go to Planet Hollywood. We go um, to one of the restaurants. We order our food. We order our drink while we're there. Wait, like, wait, was she on the date with you guys? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. I can't. Wow. That is so bold. <laughs> it's so bold. And here's the thing. The girl, she has a boyfriend. Like she even talked to him on the phone while we were in the car and everything. But that don't mean nothing. That don't mean. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can't get to know him in his basketball shorts. If she's sitting there, you know, and it's, it's like very yeah. awkward. Like a chaperone. <laughs> like the audacity. <Exactly. laughs> right. But I'm just like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm too nice. And instead of me just kind of being like, okay, I'm, I'm over this date. I'm, I'm going to go home. I was like, okay, let's just, I want a little night out anyway. Let's just go have some fun. At this point, I put him in the friend zone. I'm like, he's just going to be the homie. I, he got a cool personality. I'm just not that really, attra- I'm not really attracted to him anymore. You know, um, he, can, he can be the homie. I'm always looking for some friends or whatever. You know, I'm always in the mood to make new friends. It is, it is what it is. Plus, you know, flights. Yeah. Like think- but that's true. So, plus, did you say plus free flight? Free flight? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. didn't even think about that. <laughs> I like the way Brie thinks. Brie is like, you, I went on a second date one time with a guy because he offered to take me to the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert. And I was like, we just got to do it for the ticket. <laughs> right. Was the worst idea ever. It was, I forget what the song is called, but it's like hardcore soft porn is one of the lyrics. And every time he would sing it, when he got to porn, he would just spit everywhere. <laughs> I, was like, I literally was like, we have to get out of here. It was so bad. It was bad. So actually, never mind. The flights are not worth it. Yeah, yeah. So we get to, we're, we're having dinner, we're laughing, we're drinking. Um, he, the check time comes for, oh, before the check comes, he goes to me, he goes, have you ever been to the green door? And I'm like, no, but I know what that is. Immediately. Okay, I, I don't know what that is. Okay. So the green yeah. door in Vegas, a lot of people in Las Vegas know the green door is a swingers club. It's worth swingers. Go. Oh, <sighs> it just keeps getting. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, wait. And I said, no, but I know what that is. And he goes, oh, he goes, I love the green door. I said, oh, okay. That's nice. You know, like, <laughs> and so the time comes. The check- like, That's like, you want me to drop you off? Right. I'll drop you off, sir. So the time comes, the check comes, and the girl was like, oh, my check is separate. And then he goes, all of our checks are separate. I say, oh, okay. What? <laughs> Stop the insanity. Oh, literally gave him a ride. Literally gave Oh, wait, I'm not done. Yeah, I know. If I had glasses, I would take them off. I would th- <laughs> oh, my God. I'm not done. I'm not done. So at this point, I go, I'm in my head. I go, okay, this is what we doing. No, nope, not a big deal. So I pay for my bill, you know, because I, I got money. I'm independent. It is what it is. So we're walking back to the car. As we're walking back to the car, we walk past this group of guys. And one of the guys is checking for me so hard, checking for me so hard. And I'm like, oh, you know, I peep it too. And I'm like, dang it, I'm with this fool, right? <laughs> he freaking grabs me and pulls me closer to him. Cock blocked it like a mug, pulls me closer. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to cause a stir or nothing. So I'm just like, I don't even know what to do. And then the dude was like, he just kind of kept walking and he looked back at me and I looked back at him and he just kept going. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, I hate you right now. Why are you here? Why are you here? 
So then we get to my car and I was like, okay, I'll take you guys back to your hotel. I'm going to go home. And he go, what you about to do? And I said, oh, I'm about to go home. And he was like, oh, I was hoping uh, you would come back up to my room with me. Oh, my God. Excuse me, sir. Who? <laughs> For what? Who the hell you think you are? Like, who the hell do you, does he think I am, right? Yeah, you think I'm just desperate? He or? got me messed up. He got me desperate, girl. He think I'm just messed up. I say, oh, no, no. I will be going home like that. So I dropped him off, and so the girl gets out, and she's like, it's so good to meet you. And blah, blah, she goes in, and so he comes. He's like, well, let me get a hug before we leave. So he gives me a hug, and he like, mm, mm. You know, what she did when he gave me a hug earlier, trying to, you know, rub up on me and everything. And then I was like, okay, have a good night. I gave him the Southern pat. Yes. <laughs> yes. Back. Go ahead. Butt out. Did you do the butt out pat? Yeah. Uh, Total yeah. butt out. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> he kissed me on my cheek and I'm just like, oh God. So he goes upstairs and before I can even pull out the parking lot, he texts me and he goes, Dang, I really wanted to know what those lips would do. So me, being my naive self sometimes, I could be, I said, well, maybe if you take me on a proper date, like a gentleman, maybe you'll get a kiss one day. And then he sends me a text and says, no, I want to know what them lips do. And he sends me the eggplant emoji. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh! This guy is trash. He is trash. trash. He is a dumpster fire. Uh, oh my uh, god. Uh, dumpster fire filled with hot ass trash. Yeah, shit. I was like, oh. Oh my god. This is I had no clue. I thought he was just saying that he wanted to get a good night kiss from me. And I'm like, you disgusting jerk. And so I literally was just like, I was like, you are unbelievable. I was like, really? And then I just blocked him. I didn't say nothing else. I had nothing else to say. I was just done. Yeah. That like, is so embarrassing. I'm so sorry. Like, who you think? Like, what? It's just such, like, <laughs> the balls on this guy, though. Like, no hints whatsoever. He was just like, you know what? I'm just going to keep going with this. Some cojones. I mean, nothing thought I was desperate or something. Death. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's one of my horror stories. So that's why one of the other, the other reasons I don't like to deal with the date now. Well, I mean, yeah, that's a horror story, Nathan Hack. <laughs> Listen, I have a lot of horror stories and most of them didn't happen on dating apps. That's, that's the thing. It's like men are men. So it's really, I mean, like, and this is not to say there aren't good men out there because I do believe there are a lot of good men. I just like, I think I cherish the women that I know so much that when I think about the men I've come across in my life, whether they're like my guy friends or whatever, I can hardly pick out, you know, a handful that I think would be deserving of the women I know. Mm. What I mean, like, I just yeah. feel like, it's like it's just hard to see like men not rising to the occasion for women yeah. so yeah. frequently when you know they have the potential to but like we just live in a society where they just don't really have to mm -hmm. that's it so I actually had that conversation yesterday I went out with a friend for his birthday I know he likes me but I've told him multiple times it's not going to happen <laughs> um but he was telling me kind of like some of the things he did. And I said, you know, in my next life, I have to come back as a man because women are treating you all so well. Like you guys get catered to all the yeah. time. Uh, and I think, and I feel like you guys, you half ass it, you know, like yeah. when it's your turn to do the things that we do, you're, you're caught, you're phoning it in, yep. you're not doing the extra mile. And I was like, I just know some amazing women. And I just know some of the things that they do for their boyfriends and their husbands. I and mean, you guys are thoroughly keeping up. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, women are awesome. We really are. We really are. And it's crazy because there's so many of us amazing women out there. Like up until recently, like, for example, Karen, you and I are still single. Brie up until recently was single. There's so many amazing women out there that are still single. And it's just like, Sometimes it'll make you question, like, what the heck? Like, what, what am I doing? 
But then you, when you really think about the situation, you're like, all I'm doing is having standards for myself. Mm-hmm. Yep. And because I'm having standards for myself and because I'm, I'm realizing that I do want more, it maybe it will take me a little longer to meet the person who, who's for me, to meet my lobster, to meet my person, you know? Um, but yeah, it's not all men, you know, there are a lot of no, great men. All. I mean, I have a boyfriend, so it's like, obviously yeah. I still hold hope that like yeah. they can, you know, come through, but yeah. it is like a lesson in patience anytime you're with anybody, because I think just on an emotional level, sometimes we bring more to the table. Yeah. I, I've had this good, um, like comparison brought to me once that a friend said where like women's brains are like spaghetti and men's are like waffles. And I was like, I'm kind of on board with that notion where I feel like we're much more complicated. Like we've got much more going on. Yeah. (laughs) And they're just like a lot, they're just like kind of simple about it. I'm not saying they're dumb. I'm just saying it's like, it's like just kind of like. They're way more uh, simple than us. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think sometimes because you feel like, you've got just like this more complex network of emotions that yeah. you're not always doing everything you need. And if you don't handle that right and communicate what you need, then of course they're not going to, they're not going to rise to the occasion. So it's like all about like the teamwork involved. So yeah. I do think like if you find the right guy, like you guys, you have a good communication going, like you, it can happen. But like, I've just seen, like, I'll, I'll, I'll be, I, I was like hooking up with this guy once in LA and like, it was like two months into dating, like just casually kind of like hooking up, but we definitely liked each other. And I thought like that was like going in a good direction. And like one night, like a girl called us phone while we were literally like at my apartment and he's like, Oh, should I, should I answer? Should I invite her over? And I was like, oh. are you just, <laughs> he tried it. He tried it proposing a threesome right now like like this is really what you're doing and he was like and then when he eventually breaks up with me he's like yeah you know I just don't think I'm ready for a girlfriend and plus plus, like I just moved to LA and I'm British (laughs) 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 because you're British you're you're British actually you're right you're right that does work and like (laughs) if you're drunk enough I feel like you hear an accent they can be a two you just don't even care but I, I was yeah. like, yeah, so it's just like, it's like, it happens. It happens. And it's yeah. like, you're just like, okay, well, I didn't really do anything wrong. And I mean, it's just like this gamble all the time. All the time. And you know, what's crazy with my situation with the bad date, like I said, we had great conversations. Cause I told, like, I'm telling you guys, like by the time we got to the restaurant, I had kind of already just put them in like, okay, you could just be a homeboy type of box. Because it was kind of like the way all three of us were talking in the car. It was kind of funny and it was cool. It was chill. Uh Um, But by the end of it, what to me stuck out the most is how many women are you doing this to and saying this to that are allowing these actions for you to feel comfortable to think that you could do that with me? To me, that just shows that he has said this to numerous women. It's work. And it's work. For him to be comfortable, like, bruh, you, one, didn't show up with even a proper outfit on. You had on um, basketball shorts and a white beater. You didn't even put on a t-shirt. You know, I probably could have respected it had he just put on, like, a, at least a t-shirt to match the basketball oh shorts. He put on a white beater. Like, no, you took no pride in your appearance and meeting me for the first time, you know, I got on this really cute outfit and everything. I'm taking pride in my appearance because I want to put my foot, my best foot forward. You, you're not even doing that. You bring your coworker on the date when after you told me you wanted to take me out. We get there, you don't even pay for the bill, and then you have the nerve to say you want to see what these lips gonna do. Like I, I just not lie. And, and to think that was okay. So to me, that show, there are a lot of women out there who are tolerating this behavior. And Absolutely. to me, that makes me even more sad. I'm yeah. like, oh my well, God. Well, it makes it harder, right? Because it's like, yeah. people are like, well, everyone else went for this. Why aren't you going for this? Why do you have expectations and standards? Yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah, it's, I don't know. I feel like that's also been a conversation a lot in, in the Facebook groups, right? Yeah. I feel like a lot of these yeah. groups talk about relationships a lot. Yeah. And um, it's always like, 
older women say, well, you know, the young girls are the ones that are going for these things. You know, they're okay with the, getting $40. And, you know, I want more than just getting $40 and finding out what lips can do. You know, I actually want to date and have conversations. And get to have know good conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like what's, what's in here? Cause this yeah. is what, you know, all of this is going to go at some point. Right. Yeah. We get old, but like this, at some, you know, this is going to stay around a lot longer. And if you don't have yeah. any, substance, you know, it's just like, what's the point? What's yeah. the point? And I'm the type of person, I'm actually more attracted to someone like I could never have even like thought of you or looked at you a certain way. But if I make that mental connection with you, that is the most attractive thing to me. I'm very like driven uh, sexually by having a mental connection and an emotional connection with someone. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wish I could kind of just be, sometimes I wish I could kind of be the girl who can just kind of hook up. But I, I can't unless I, I need that emotional, mental connection, you know? That's what I was going to say is like, not all women are like that. So I do yeah. think there are women who probably got that text from him. Yeah. He, like, kind of knew what it was. Like, he's only in town for a night. This is a quick fuck. Yeah. And that's like sometimes what people go on dating apps for, like men and women, like both sometimes just need, like they have needs. So yeah. Yeah. I like. Get it. I mean, I'm the same way as you. Like, I need to kind of like meet people in, in person and like have yeah. a connection, my preferred method. But yeah. I do think like he that doesn't mean though, in my opinion, that like that should be the standard or his rule. Right. Like, it's just to me really kind of. I don't know. It just pisses me off when men make assumptions when women haven't even given you any type of of sign. Anything. Right, like yeah. I had a guy yeah. take me on a date. Met him in real life. He took me on a date and he offered to pick me up in his car. And in LA, I was like, I don't ever let guys take me in their car on like the first date. It's just like a rule. But I just got him a fucking parking ticket that week that was like seventy dollars, and I was like. I do not want to look for a meter and pay for parking. Yeah. And so and I was like, I was like, all right, fine. Like, and I dropped like a pin to where he could pick me up instead of my address. But even still, I like, I got in a car with a person I don't know that well. And he immediately was just like touching all over me. And when he took us to the date, he, we, we drive past the restaurant. I'm like, you just passed the restaurant. And he's like, yeah, but I, I know this area really well. I don't live that far away. So I'm just gonna park on a stri- side street where I don't have to pay for a meter. Uh-huh. I'm like, okay. Uh-huh. So, but in my mind, I'm like, all right, well, like, it's not that crazy. He's not going to murder you. This is like, we're still in my neighborhood. We're still in West Hollywood. Like I know but he should have never put you in that um, uncomfortable situation. Also- he should have never put you in yeah. an uncomfortable situation like that. He should have been a yeah. I was like, the also, the restaurant has ballet, we can, whatever. Yeah. So we get out of the car, and he is like rubbing all over my like stomach and like grabbing me and like nuzzling his like head in my neck. First date, and I'm like, you're being really touchy. And he was like, you shouldn't have worn that crop top. And I was like, we. I was like, it's all the only green light he needed was what I was wearing. Wow. Like, that wow. was all it took for him to feel like he had permission to like touch me. Yeah. And, like when we got out of the date, which it was an awful date. And like, there's so many more details of the story where you'd be like red flags, like all over the place. But yeah. when we're walking back to his car, I'm just like, Oh my God, I want to get home so badly. I want this to be over. And he kind of like, instead of I'm walking towards the car, he tugs me to the right and there's a apartment door. And he's like, let me show you my place. No. Oh my gosh. Oh my parked, God. He had parked his car, picked a restaurant within walking distance to his house play. and, and, and parked his car in front of his apartment and did not tell me until after the date. That is not okay. Man, this is that not is, okay. That is creep level a thousand. That, like, that is a Tuesday so night. Creepy. It was a Tuesday night. I was like, in what fucking world? Like, even if it was a Saturday, it's like, it's like, I don't have time to be fucking taking a look at your apartment, yeah. one. And two, why would you not disclose that information? First? Yeah. Because like he's a creep. You have permission. Yeah. Yeah. Total creep. And it was just, it was just annoying because I like his boss knew my boss. And so I just thought he was like, like, you, you know, when you like feel like because you have mutuals, it means they've checked some sort of like background check. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, no, I haven't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. 
<laughs> but I mean, like, to your defense, though, who would have thought that somebody would do that? I would have never thought someone would <laughs> like, do that. I have never heard anything like that in my life. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, I, like you, you hear about pe guys being like, you know, maybe we should go back to our place. I mean, yeah. go back to my place. But yeah. it's usually done while you're at the table or something like that. Right. It's not like, hey, I'm like, right setting you up. <laughs> Here's a place right here. It's like, that's like shady. That's no, like that's shady. I, it was appalling. It was appalling. I was like, I think that's up there in one of the worst dates I've ever been on. But honestly, I've had some other ones where it's just like, I just can't even believe this is happening to me right now. Yeah. Like, why? 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 <laughs> Why? Oh, Why? my God. How do I get out of it? <laughs> yeah. Karen, you got any crazy bad dates? Um, I feel like I don't have bad dates. I, I feel like the guys I typically go out with, I usually weed them out in a conversation phase. Yeah. And they don't get crazy until, like, months later. Mm. Like, so the last guy um, that I was dating, like, end of last year, early this year, Oh my gosh. I was just like, this guy's perfect. He goes to church. Um, he likes to cook and clean. I don't do those things. <laughs> um, and like, he was just like super like overly catering. Like when I would go over there, he's like, you just sit here. Don't worry about doing anything. Here's a remote control. Do you want a back rub? I'll run your bath water for you. I made mean, like, it was just be amazing. And then I was just like, so like, what do you do when I'm not here? And he said, oh, you know, my laundry, I work out, I clean the house. And I was like, well, do you ever go out with your friends? And he was like, uh, I don't really have friends. And I was like, oh. <laughs> you gotta watch you those. Have, you know, and so for me, that, that was a red flag. I was like, okay, he doesn't have any friends. He had been divorced twice. Um, and his daughter had recently passed. So I was like, how are you working through the loss of your child? Mm. He's like, what do you mean? And he was just like, I'm like, who are you talking to? Yeah. You know, you had a lot of past trauma even growing up. Because he would tell me these stories about growing up. And I was like, who, who are you venting to? Because you clearly, I, I don't want to hear this all the time. Like, I, I don't know you that well. Um, you don't go to therapy. <laughs> well, because it, it was a lot. It was a lot. So, um, so it's just like over time, I started noticing, like, he didn't do things like respect boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, so like I have a thing about my face I don't like people touching my face and so I told him that I was like hey you're always like touching my face like I don't like to touch my face so please don't touch my face and he'd still be like why can't I touch your face like <laughs> and I was just like this is so strange and so he had um, ended up losing his job and um, and I was like really sad I was like oh I'm so sorry about that and so I went over to his house and he was super excited. He was just like, I have great news for you, Karen. You're going to be so excited. So I'm thinking, you know, that he has found a job. And this is when I knew that he, wa he wasn't all, all the way there. So I get upstairs and he was like, um, I'm going to go to Milwaukee or Wisconsin. And I was just like, oh, okay. I'm thinking maybe there'll be a job opportunity up there. So he worked at a hotel and the hotel company, the person that owns it, owns the Marcus Theaters. And he wants to be a screenwriter. Now he's never taken a screenwriting class. He's never acted or any of that stuff, but he just knows that he can do it. Okay. So I get over there. He's just like, so I'm going to go there. He's like, well, you know, that's where Greg Marcus is. And I was like, who the hell is Greg Marcus? Yeah. He owns the Marcus Theater. And I was like, okay. He's like, so I'm going to go up there and I'm going to ask Greg Marcus if I can make a movie. Oh, I said, you're going to ask the president of the company that fires you. If you can, I'm like, do you even know this man? Well, yeah, he came by the hotel a few times. We you know we talked a few times and I was like, but you're like looking into possibly suing them for wrongful termination, <laughs> but you're going to go to Milwaukee and you're going to walk up to this man's office and tell him to give you money to make a movie. And he was like, yeah. And so I was like, let me take a step back. I was like, I'm taking a step back. I said, well, do you have a script? <laughs> no. Have you ever read a script? No. Do you want a movie? 
<laughs> he's dreaming. He's and dreaming. I was like, Let's okay, so you don't have a script. You've never read a script. Oh, and I was like literally sitting. He's like, I know what you're thinking. I was like, you possibly <laughs> could not know what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> oh my god! And then, and then I was like, worse. Oh, Whatever you think I'm thinking, it's worse. It's than that. way <laughs> worse. It's, it's like you know, I, I'm just I just kept fueling a fire. I was like, so what is this movie going to be about? He's like, what else? It's going to be about my life. Oh, honey. And Which I have good luck with that. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. trying to crush anybody's dreams. If that's your dream. But it, it it was very random to ask, try to ask the people you are about to sue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <it> feels. <laughs> to help you make your movie. And you don't even have a concept yet. You don't, you don't have a concept. You don't have a script. You don't have a script. <laughs> and then, like, I, like, I try to be helpful. Like, I forwarded him um, a training day. I went online. I found a training day screenplay. And I was like, I know you think you're the, going to be the next Denzel, although you've never acted in anything, not a church play, not a school <laughs> So I forwarded it to him. And then he starts like texting me like, what do these notes mean? And I was like, that's like shorthand for screenplays. Well, why don't they just write the regular way? And I was like, you, you clearly, <laughs> this isn't going to work out for you. So, oh yeah. my God. Have any of you guys ever gone on a date with someone and you had to sign an NDA? <laughs> I think I should have had to before. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've, one guy spent literal. Okay. Well, the producer and me sometimes once I meet someone and I'm like, this is never. I just I just go into full like producer mode and then I just find out everything about them and I just yeah. psychoanalyze them. So a guy once told me that his ex girlfriend of five years broke up with him because he has an extreme porn addiction. And then I just needed to know everything about it. Um, yeah, and I've told a lot of people about it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but is he, you don't have to tell us who he is, but is he someone that's like. No, no. Oh. I mean, like, he works in the industry, so I feel like he should have been like, you know, I, th I feel like he could have waited a couple of dates in maybe to tell me. Oh my God. And he didn't. So, so the, yeah, he's told me a lot. Of so the reason I bought that I brought that up is because did you guys hear about the story with Odell Beckham and the girl? No. no. The girl who the girl you guys haven't heard the story about the girl who said that Odell Beckham likes to have women poop on him. Oh man. No. I heard that about John Mayer before as well. John, That's, are you serious? No, that, I can't. So the thing is, my whole thing is, I did not like that this girl did this. I just feel like when you have sexy time with someone, that should wait, be she, oh, wait, so she, you and that person. She went on a podcast and said this, y'all. She was on this podcast called, it's called The Whores Next Door, which says a lot. Um, and they were basically, they talk about relationships that they've had with different people who are celebrities uh sports players and she was basically saying that he likes uh, a woman to defecate on him um during sex and stuff and so my whole thing is like one i don't understand why odell obviously this wasn't someone you can trust because right. so why wouldn't he think to have an nba one and two if that's what he's in, it's not my cup of tea, but that's his personal business. Like, I don't, I don't like that she put his business out like that. Mm -hmm. He hasn't said anything as far as like denying it or saying it's true or anything like that. He actually has been just kind of like, he kind of joked about it. He was like, oh, okay, so now I like to do, like he kind of brushed it off type thing. Mm -hmm. But what do you think when it comes to like talking about your relationships are intimacy in intimacy that you have had with another person. Like, what do you think the rule should be? Should it, I think you shouldn't talk about stuff like that unless you have a communication with the person that you both are okay with you maybe discussing it. Like, let's say if you did go on a podcast or something. Um, but even with that, I feel like people shouldn't necessarily say names and stuff. I just feel like that's private. I, 
Yeah, I just don't think that that's classy. It's you know? so unclassy. I think it's like, classless. Right? I mean, I just see it because it's like when you're intimate with somebody, it's very private. It's very personal. And yes. like, I understand like maybe your best friend, you might want to be like, oh my God, girl. But like someone's opening up to you, you know, and that means yeah. that they trust you to some extent, even if they think you're a one-nighter, that to some extent they're, they're trusting you with their body, Yeah, you know? And like, I don't think that you should be talking about the, you could talk about the experience, but I don't think you should give the name. Yeah. I feel like if you're doing, okay, here's my problem with her is like, you seem like you're a fame chaser. Like, yeah. Clout chaser like, like a mug. Yeah. You, yes. you were doing it for the clout. I feel like, like you were probably willing to defecate on him because you were like, I'm going to do that for the pop later. Like, yep. I, I genuinely feel like if, if you go to tell it in a way that is like, kind of like braggadocious, I don't know. It doesn't sit well with me because I feel like like I've heard stories about celebrities before or like somebody, like a celebrity has sent like nude photos, like unsolicited photos before to a friend of a friend. And it's sort of like stuff like that. It's sort of like, okay, well, like there's a difference between like, like men kind of like un, un um, invited yeah. doing things that aren't agreed upon. And right. being like, I don't, I didn't like that. And like, I'm going to go warn other people. And then you just like publicly outing and shaming someone after yes, you participated. Yeah. I don't know. I can't tell. I didn't listen to it. So I don't really know. Uh, I, I did not like it at all. I was like, that is so shady. And I was just like, what was the point of that? Like, what was the point? I mean, I know the point, yeah. obviously it's, it's clout chasing, but it, I just thought it was just so tacky. It's was, tacky. It's so tacky. Well, it's like that book that came out. I think we were in college or right after college where Superhead had like. Oh, yeah. Everything. And I was just like, I mean, I did read it. I read it. I read it. <laughs> I read it because I'm trash. Confessions of a video. Confessions of a video. But while I was reading it, I was just like, I can't believe she's putting these people's names in here. I, I would have been so happy with the story. Yeah. You know, and I was just like, this is really, it's tacky, it's classless, yeah. it's uncouth, it's not, and it's just not cool. It's not a dope it's thing to do. It's not cool. Somebody on Twitter, I saw yesterday, this guy posted screenshots of his DMs, and it was like, and, and, and it, he didn't say who, but it was an NFL player's wife messaging him, being like, stay away from my baby daddy, oh. he's not gay, he'll never like you, called him the, like, slur for um, yeah people. yeah and so she was like pretty offensive but he he like covered up her name but you could still kind of see her profile picture oh my god and obviously like whoever this nfl player is is not out so you're kind of like outing someone if they track down this girl and it's so wrong like I, I was like so uncomfortable just like reading the comments and stuff. Yeah. I don't know how it ended up on my Twitter. Somebody had must have interacted with it that I knew. Yeah. But I remember just thinking this just yesterday how I was like not comfortable with like people disclosing things online and like kind of yeah. being like, well, I'm not gonna like call it out, but the internet can do its thing and figure out who you're talking about very easily, you know? Yeah. But I, <clears throat> I will say, I have had good experiences though when women have like I said in the Facebook group where I posted basically this I this is gonna be another horror story about dating apps which I don't <laughs> totally think is like like I don't I don't find them to be problematic if if you like I, I think it's all about kind of like sussing out whether someone's trustworthy and then making sure you don't put yourself in an unsafe position which yeah. I've learned the hard way I've done to myself so it's like I've gotten I've you know evolved but I matched with this guy and we were chatting and he told me he was an actor and I didn't answer for like 12 hours because I was just like fucking busy and he like freaked out he called me the c word he was like yeah he oh. was like, he started the online harassing me he was like ugly like bitch fix your nose like all the stuff what yeah and so you I have just a cute like, nose by the way Hello. Yeah, I got a non-surgical nose job like, <laughs> it's a whole thing but um <laughs> because of him I'm kidding um but he so he was har harassing me and so I blocked him and then he kept finding ways to contact me like through these like random phone numbers like burner numbers 
which wow. I found out was because he's an, I think he's an Uber driver. So you're able to like, just get new like phone numbers. So he kept calling me, threatening to sue me, like all these things. So I took screenshots of everything and I put it in this girl's night out. And basically that's when I found out that multiple girls in the group had had similar things happen where oh my God. Had, she, one girl had hooked up with him and he took photos and was like threatening to blackmail her. Another girl, like he like, told her he forgot his wallet and he'd Venmo her for his half and never did. And so like he owed her money. And so basically I set everything to Bumble at the time yeah. and show them all of it. And then they like kicked him off the app, sent me a bouquet of flowers. Like it was the whole thing. Aww. And just like this guy has tried to come out, come after girls more. And then we've all kind of like supported each other and make, put a stop to it. So there are like, you know, circumstances in which like you should expose something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that's definitely a circumstance. Definitely. And, you know, I'm not talking about like things where, you know, I've heard like podcasts where like a husband kind of like, you know, jokes and says little things about their wife or their a significant other. And I know like it, it, the way it's done, it's in, in a loving way. And so it seems like it's okay. But I'm just saying, like, the way this girl did that with the Odell Beckham thing, it was definitely not a loving way. It was definitely done in a way of just, like, you know, I need I need some clout right now, so I'm going to go out here and tell the story. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, was just, it was just, it was just, I just didn't like it. I just think it was messed up. But, well, yeah, like, the, your situation was definitely a situation where you need to expose the jerk. Yeah, because like, he could have killed someone. He sounded like exactly. a crazy person. Like, he was yeah. on the road. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's also the intent, right? Yeah. Behind the message. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's one thing to educate people about a potential, you know, Joe from you out yeah. there, right? Yeah. Versus, you know, I'm I'm doing this for clout or to be malicious yeah. or for like revenge reasons, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think we kind of have to know like why people do things. Yeah. So I oh my gosh, that's crazy, Bree. That's crazy. Your stories are like, <laughs> I am so happy you found somebody because I don't yeah, know if I would have dated anymore. I think I would have just been like, I'm done. He's super cute too. Her boyfriend, he's super cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, do you I'm have all my lights off in the room? I'm just kidding. <laughs> do you all have any like tips or anything that you want to tell people should they want a virtue date um, to date? someone during COVID I did see like an article where they were saying like you know uh try to virtual date someone as long as you can and then when you guys make a decision where you want to meet up in public you should both go get tested get your results and then meet each other like do you guys have any other like tips or anything since you both have been doing it I would say be creative yeah um because I'm kind of like Brie like I wasn't expecting so my first date I didn't know was going to be a date like he was like, we're going to go for a walk along the lake. And then he showed up and he was just like, no, actually, we're going to go on a picnic. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, I was just like, oh, actually, we like this guy, but I think he's, I think he's for everybody. That's a, that's a shame. Um, so I think being open to being creative and thinking outside of the box. Mm -hmm. And although I really hate FaceTiming, I think it's a great tool right now. Yeah. So, you know, ladies, put, put your hair in a ponytail. Yeah. You know, put on some lip gloss or something and, yeah. and just be okay to having virtual dates right now because it's it's really it's a really nice way to kind of get into like the inside of people. Yeah. Bree. Yeah. Um my favorite date that we did before we met up in person was we ordered these pizza kits from this restaurant in LA that would drop it off on Postmates. And we both on Zoom got like martini and pizza kits made martinis, got drunk, and then made pizzas, cooked the pizzas, and then <laughs> was like, whose pizza's better? And then ate the pizzas all on Zoom. And it was like, honestly, like a very good date. Like I was yeah. like, this was fun. Um, and it felt like we were doing it together, even though we were in our separate kitchens. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good activity that you still felt like you were like having you know, you weren't just like staring at each other being like, yeah, so like, what shows do you watch? And yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. You just run out of like, I don't know, it just kind of gets, 
It was uh, very. Or, you can have like some very organic moments in a situation like that. Yeah, and yeah. that's what you need on a real date. So it's like hard to suss out if it if you if it's like applicable to real life until yeah. you start doing real life things. Yeah, so that was so yeah. hard. So I would say like don't just like you know do a Zoom date or whatever. Like try and do things that you learn about each other more because you have to literally like make up for the fact that you can't like go to a concert or go to an experience together. I think too, um, the fact that everyone is dating virtually right now, I think like, like you said, um, Karen earlier, it allows you to get to know the person better. Cause if you think about it, if we're in our normal dating life, you're so busy doing all these different activities and stuff that you can't really just focus on the person and, and dive deep. And if you want, you know, if you just want to date to date, then the, the, um, distraction is okay. But if you want to date to like find that person for you, find the guy for you, find the woman for you, for the fellas or um, my lesbian sisters out there or for my gay brothers out there, if you want to find the guy for you, um, you have to definitely dive deep. You have to dive deep and really get to know someone um, be, to know if that person is the person for you. So I think the virtual dates definitely are helping a lot of people do that. I think I may give it a try, y'all. Like you should. I yeah, just dive in there. <laughs> I've had so many bad dates, though, so I don't know. Well, just a few. Just a few bad dates, I should say. But. Listen, this is what I'm telling you, though, is, like, I have had so many bad dates. It did not matter how I made them. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it just men are just, like, a trap shoot. Like, it's a crap shoot. It's like, it's, like, they're either going to be – yeah it's, it's just hit or miss they're just, just trial and error so it is. Uh, it is you know don't don't um let the whole year lapse without putting yourself out there is what i think and i think the best way to do it right now is yeah online because it's safe oh that's good that's a good way to end this thank you brie <laughs> so i want to thank both of you so much for doing this with me brie i know you were a nervous wreck but you did great mm -hmm. care bear thank you so much i love you both so much and um care bear your guys gonna come next we had her success your guys coming next we're gonna nikki, hope and then when that happens i think nikki you should just have a session with them because i would like to hear you know, <laughs> oh yeah like have a with the guys yeah talk about what they're doing i was like why am i doing this he should come on he should explain <laughs> you know what it would have been cool if you would have just had him there with you because that would have been cool too did you yeah. ever go on any dates with any other people or were you just kind of like not in person no, no. Wow. wow okay i love that yeah i'm such a hopeless romantic so i'm just like oh i love that <laughs> Because love is awesome. It, you know? Love is so awesome. I love love. <laughs> yeah, it's a great thing. God, my connection's so weird. Uh, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I love you guys so much. Thank you again for doing this with me. Uh, I appreciate you. Yeah, nice you. And you. I think, okay. I think okay. everyone that's out there on YouTube for watching this episode of Undeniably Nikki, and please make sure you subscribe. <laughs> like and share and if you have any questions uh, do it again do it again for me Bree. subscribe up there yeah <laughs> like <up> there. <laughs> and if you guys have any questions for care rare and Bree, just feel free to leave them in my comments and i'll make sure that they know what's going on all right love you guys i'll see you next time ah! <laughs> <laughs>